you're all doing great and your boat went perfectly well. So you're all energized and charged up for your upcoming J, which, which is like just two weeks away. So in this video, I'll be sharing some of the efficient tips that will help you tackle your physics section, which is considered to be toughest amongst all three. So let's get started. So you know that there are 30 questions in the physics paper. So my take on the current J would be like 40% uh, of the paper, 40 to 45% of the paper would be from class 12 section, whereas the class 11 section would be having a weightage of 55 to 60%. Now, one thing that you should be very clear about is that 40% uh, of the entire question is information based. What I mean is that there will be formula based questions such as some special cases or information based question or a statement based question. So this is a section where every student who has studied NCRT properly can score perfectly well. Now what we need to do for a paper where, uh, you know, a question, if you score it correctly, you'll get four marks and uh, you know, considering an incorrect section, you will have a deduction of one mark. So what needs to be done? So let's talk about the class 11 section. So if you refer to the last three year trend analysis, I would project a moderate level paper where you can score up to 70% easily. Now. Uh, going through the trend analysis, what I can say is certain sections were missed in 2015, such as circular motion, work energy power, string waves, fluid, surface tension, and instruments. So this makes it very, very critical for the upcoming paper. Now you can envisage a question from kinematics, one from error analysis, one can be from friction or center of mass. Last year, there were two questions from center of mass. Rigid body dynamics is very, very important. Then uh, you can have gravitation, elasticity, one question each from gravitation and elasticity. From kinetic theory of gases, heat and thermodynamics, there will be nearly two to three questions. And from SHM, you can anticipate a relatively easy question, but there can be two to three questions from SHM as well. And one easy question from sound waves. So that was all about class 11 part. Now coming to the class 12 part, Certain sections that were missed in 2015 and 2014, which make them very, very important are AC, nuclear physics, semiconductors, magnetic property of material, polarization, diffraction, damped and force oscillation. I would like to reiterate over here that polarization, electromagnetic wave, these are specially mains focused sections. You can anticipate nine questions, nine to 10 questions from electrodynamics, where from electrostat you'll be having nearly two to three questions from capacitor one question current electricity two questions electromagnetic field and force three questions electromagnetic induction two questions geometrical optics and wave optics will fetch close to three to four questions modern physics two questions and you can anticipate one question from principle of communication now let's try to understand how to tackle a particular problem let's take a previously asked question so one of the questions was like four particles each of mass m were moving on the circumference of a circle each equidistant from each other only under the effect of mutual gravitation and you had to calculate speed of each particle the reason to discuss this question is it would give you a clear insight that in mains nearly in every questions there will be like intermixing of topics so if you refer to this question here there is intermixing of circular motion along with the concept of gravitation so you need know that as a particle is moving along a circle it will need certain amount of centripetal force now what is that source of the centripetal force the source of that centripetal force would be the mutual force of gravitation which will be acting along the particles so how to solve this question you just refer on a particular particle Take care of all the forces that act towards the center. You can take a reference of 45 degree inclination and find the respective component. When you get all of these components, find their vectorial re uh, resultant and then equate it to mu square upon r. From that, you can easily find the value of u. This was just a simple example of that. If you're focused, your fundamentals are clear and you have a thorough understanding of the topics you can score perfectly well. Wish you all the best for your means paper. Thank you.